pancreatitis and uh, and um, gastric ulceration and they would present with indigestion cramps and constipation the musculoskeletal system obviously it involves and affects the musculoskeletal system a lot and there's a lot of osteoclastic activity and we said that there's going to be demineralization of the bones cyst formations and fractures so they will present with a lot of bone pain and in the urogenital system the stone formation and then i told you that they would present with some kind of a uh, very um, submissive alternating with a very aggressive or a paranoid behavior and many of them they would present in the emergency in the form of acute dehydration and i told you that uh, if you can look into the eyes of these people uh, they would give you uh, what they're suffering from and on clinical examination we i told you that in the eyes we'll have corneal calcification we saw this slide last time and then i told you that we can have band keratopathies obviously once again this is the calcium deposition in the in the cornea and then in the conjunctiva we'll have this foam like calcifications it would appear that is that if has soap has gone into the eyes and you'll keep on rubbing the eyes uh, but this will not go away because this is just a calcium foamy calcium deposition in the subconjunctiva layers now how do we diagnose biochemically uh, we know that parathyroid hormone uh, would when it will be there it will cause an increase in the calcium so if this calcium levels is more than 3 millimole per liter or 10 mg per deciliter you should have an indication of suspicion and if the phosphate levels are less than 0.8 because calcium is retained and phosphate is excreted so if the calcium levels the phosphate levels are less than 0.8 mmol and if alkaline phosphate is greater than 1000 and you have got a significant <coughs> elevation or a four times elevation of parathyroid hormone you should seriously think that this patient has got a parathyroid adenoma and the patient has got primary hyperparathyroidism the diagnosis becomes very simple because uh, if you have an ultrasound probe and uh, even if you have got very little knowledge of ultrasound you should be able to pick it up because it is lying subcutaneously behind the behind the uh, thyroid gland and uh, uh, you can see that uh, we have discussed the uh, thyroid before you can see that right in the center is the trachea in front of the trachea is the isthmus of the thyroid gland and you can see that this is the lobe of the thyroid gland and the large black area which you can see is the carotid vessels this is the carotid sheet the uh, which contains three things it contains the common carotid artery the internal jugular vein and sometimes the the the, the vagus nerve as well here you can see that a part uh, just like posterior to the right lobe of the thyroid gland you can see a huge hypoechoic shadow which is just on to the side of the internal jugular vein on side of the uh, you know common carotid artery and this is the parathyroid adenoma you can have a look because uh, you you can also have a look in, in another view you can see that this is the isthmus of the thyroid gland the left lobe of the thyroid gland the right of the lobe of the thyroid gland and here you can see the parathyroid adenoma lying over here just to uh, recapitulate uh, in front of the isthmus you have got the muscles of the neck you can this is the sternocleidomastoid and you, these two muscles on both sides these are the strap muscles so on an ultrasound it is uh, not very difficult to pick up a parathyroid adenoma specific especially if it's more than 5 mm is in size it can be easily picked up but sometimes there is a confusion that whether it is a parathyroid adenoma or whether it is uh, a lymph node because in the neck in the retro thyroid area in the paratrachial area there are a lot of lymph nodes as well so this could be a lymph node as well and a lymph node can also give rise to a similar you know kind of a hypoechoic area which you can see over here like this and to overcome this uh, problem uh, you can have a color doppler because all the parathyroid glands as i told you would have a blood supply from the inferior thyroid artery the inferior thyroid artery goes and gets split up into various branches and the upper branches will lead uh, to the uh, superior parathyroid and the inferior branches will lead to the inferior parathyroid so if you have a color doppler along with your ultrasound you can actually see a blood vessel going right up to up to that uh, you know uh, uh, up to that hypoechoic area and you can see the specks of blood flowing into it whereas in a lymph node you would not be able to see an independent vessel going right up to the lymph node because lymph nodes they do not get individual named arteries so that is uh, that is the way you can actually in this patient 
uh, where we diagnosed uh, Mr. Sabiuddin as um, you, you know the um, uh, the uh, the parathyroid adenoma in 2016, uh, we had a difficulty. But a curler doctor gave us a very fair clue that if a blood vessel is going right up to that hypoechoic area, this is a, a parathyroid adenoma. And uh, a CT scan can also further help us. Uh, this is the cross-sectional view of a CT scan. You can very well recognize that this is the vertebra. This is the anterior area and this is the posterior area. This is the vertebra. And this large hollow area is the, is, uh, is the trachea. Right behind this is lying the esophagus. This is the isthmus of the thyroid gland. The left lobe of the thyroid gland, right lobe of the thyroid gland. And this is the large, these, these two large, this is the, can you, can you tell me that, what is this vein? Can anybody hear me? What is this vein? Internal jugular. This is the, this is the jugular vein. This is the large one is the external jugular vein. And the vessel which is on the inner side is the carotid vessel. So this is the carotid sheet. And this, in, on the right, uh, on the left side, you can see the whole lobe. On the left side, you can also see a lobe, but behind the lobe, there's another, you know, large swelling. Now, this is the parathyroid gland. So, a CT scan will be more specific, and this will exactly tell you uh, the location of a parathyroid adenoma if it is more than one centimeter in size. Another view, you can see that this is the trachea, the esophagus, the two lobes of the thyroid gland. On both sides, you can see the, uh, the jugular veins, the uh, carotid vessels and on the left side, you can see a large parathyroid adenoma behind the posterior lobe of the thyroid gland. So on a CT scan, you can actually pick it up. But once again, uh, uh, the problem is that there's a, there are a lot of lymph nodes in these areas. And the lymph nodes, they can actually really increase in size. And they could mimic uh, um, like a parathyroid adenoma on a CT scan or an ultrasound. But if you have got a good ultrasonologist, he or she can tell you that if there's a blood vessel leading to that area, but sometimes it is also not picked up. So um, we take the help of simple x-rays as well, because they are also very, very informative. And you can see that uh, this is the x-ray of uh, the hands of one of our, uh, you know, uh, patient. You can very well see that the bone is very, uh, you know, remarkably demineralized. And apart from the, that demineralization, Normally the, the, normally, the bone should be white like this. But you can see that the bone is not white like this. The bone has become black. And you can see that uh, there's a lot of cortical cysts inside. Can you see these cystic areas? This is very, very typical of a parathyroid skeleton of the hand. Multiple cystic areas. And as the time you pass by, it will just not be limited to the, uh, to the formation, the demineralization of the bone or the formation of the cyst, actually it will keep on progressing. You will see that there are, uh, you know, the periosteum gets elevated, there are periosteal elevations, and gradually the fingertips, the distal phalanges, bone resorption starts taking place. Because you know that uh, in, um, in uh, parathyroid adenomas, when there's excess of parathyroid hormone, it enhances the osteoclastic activity, it keeps on actually increasing the activity of the osteoclast, and bone starts getting demineralized. The larger bones, they will retain their architecture, they'll maintain their architecture. But the smaller bones, apart from demineralization, they will also get bony erosion. So you can see that if you see this action, after the uh, periosteal elevations, you can see that the terminal phalanxes because of the continuous loss of the, uh, of the um, calcium from it, they start getting demineralized and the bone resorption starts. Actually, the bone starts melting away. And when the bone resorption starts, the patients are going to present with fingertip ulcerations because the underlying bone starts giving way. So uh, this is a very classical uh, action of the hand, the previous one, and this one. And uh, this is a late presentation of the hands in cases of parathyroid adenomas, which are very active. And ultimately, you'll find that so much bone resorption takes place, so much of that goes away, that you know the fractures, they start happening. And the, you can see that this, this is just like a tumor of the bone. And the cortex of the bone is lost, the cancellous area of the... In this bone, you can see the cortical area. You can see the cancellous area. But in this bone, you, in this bone, you can see only a part of the cortex, which is remaining 
the cancellous bone is totally gone and on two sides on this side you can see that the bone resorption has taken place so this these will have spontaneous fractures chota si chot lagti hai there is a trivial trauma and the patient uh, will suffer from you know fractures so uh, that is what is going to happen and this is not only limited to the skeleton of the hand uh, this will go into the skull and the skull will lose its typical white white appearance and it will be speckled with smaller blacker spots which indicates that a lot of bone resorption has taken place and this typical picture is known as the salt and pepper skull aisa lagta hai ki kisi ne thoda sa namak phenk hai aur kisi ne thoda sa wahan pe na kali mirch phenk hui hai so this is known as a salt and pepper skull and if you go to the bony skeleton you will find that the bone resorption starts taking place because you know a lot of effect takes place on the axial skeleton because the axial skeleton has to bear the brunt of the body weight so uh, what happens is that cyst formation will occur in the bones and ultimately as you can see that this is the fifth lumbar vertebra the bones they will start collapsing there will be spontaneous fractures of the vertebral spine and if you are not very careful these spontaneous fractures would cause cause compression onto the nerves and onto the spinal cord and will lead to paralysis of the lower limbs as well and you can see that it does not spare any any bones especially the axial bones you can see that this is the bony resorption of a patient of the uh, pubic the lower pubic rami and you can see a large cystic you know swelling in the tibia and then in the femur as well so practically none of the bones is spared it will involve uh, the uh, each and every part of the skeleton and lead to spontaneous fractures ultimately and as i told you in my previous lectures that many of these patients are uh, presented to us from the orthopedic department and then actually nephrocalcinosis this is a very classical x-ray of one of a patients of nephrocalcinosis uh, nephrocalcinosis means that this calcium deposition in the kidneys the reason is very simple because the parathyroid hormone acts on the uh, renal tubular uh, receptors and enhances the reabsorption of calcium from the tubules because the net effect of the parathyroid hormone is that it enhances the level of calcium into the into the uh, into the blood and i told you that this will come from by enhanced absorption of the calcium from the gut enhance osteoclastic activity uh, from the bones and enhance reabsorption so when there is greater and greater reabsorption of calcium into the into the uh, into the from the kidney the renal tubules will have deposition of the calcium and ultimately they will form small renal stones so this is a plain x ray it looks that as if this is an intravenous uh, you know uh, nephrogram or intravenous uh, you know uh, urogram of that uh, that area but no this is a simple plain x ray and you can see that there are multiple small stones formed in both the kidneys now you know if you get this kind of nephrocalcinosis you will find it very rare in other diseases it does not happen in other diseases so this is almost a very classical example of nephrocalcinosis which is because of hyperparathyroidism and yeah. uh, this is the ultrasound of the similar patient of the same patient this is the liver this is the right kidney and you can see that the multiple calcium stones into the kidney so if you find calcium stones in both of the kidneys you must investigate this patient for hypercalcemia and hyperparathyroidism uh, i have taken this uh, picture from a book uh, in the jaw uh, you know the bone stop resorption starts taking place in the um, in the in the mandible and this is known as the jaw tumor or it represents itself in the form of a jaw tumor but it is actually a, a a cancellous cyst of the bone you can see that the maxillofacial surgeon he has actually taken off that uh, cancellous piece of the bone and it is filled up with you know with the bone wax this is the bone wax which is there so but this is one of the presentation and the only way to get out of this uh, problem is to recognize that this patient has got hypercalcemia this patient has got hyperparathyroidism because of an adenoma and this adenoma it has to be removed when i was doing my uh, residency as a registrar and then as a senior registrar uh, this was the most definite way of picking up a parathyroid adenoma we would go ahead and get a technetium thallium scan and this investigation would take us about 3 to 4 hours and this would uh, entail the presence of one of the residents into the radiology block 
so what was done was that initially the patient was fed with the was injected with uh, technetium 99 this technetium 99 uh, was uh, taken up by by both by the thyroid and the parathyroid and then thallium 201 was given to the same patient and then the image of thallium was subtracted from the image of technetium which means you can see that this would be the image of the thyroid gland and this would be the image of so technetium would you know actually go and get retained in the thyroid and the parathyroid both but thallium would only get accumulated in the parathyroid so this thallium this technetium component was subtracted from the image and we were left yahan pe aapko arrow nazar aa raha hai you were left with the parathyroid but this was a very tedious examination so ultrasound very good ct scan more than enough but the actual test for Uh, for a parathyroid adenoma is known as the systemy b scan this is methyl iodide biguanide iodide scan now this uh, this uh, mm, uh, this contrast has got a great affinity towards the thyroid and the parathyroid both but initially it is taken up by the thyroid and the parathyroid both but after few uh, few minutes and few hours subsequent excess it will start getting diminished from the thyroid and it would only get accumulated in the parathyroid and after 3 hours you will not find any system may be in the thyroid it will be only if there if there is a parathyroid adenoma only that parathyroid adenoma would be highlighted so you can see that this is one of the most definite ways or because you know the picking up on an ultrasound is doubtful and uh, it depends upon the expertise of the person similarly picking it up on the ct scan the specificity and sensitivity ranges about to 80 to 85% but systemic scan is almost 95% specific it would pick up if there is a parathyroid adenoma which is which is uh, working more as compared to a normal parathyroid gland it will be picked up so you can see a very classical example of how it is eliminating the thyroid and the parathyroid first and then from the thyroid goes away and it only remains in the inferior parathyroid and ultimately none of it is visible it is only visible in the parathyroid so this almost gives you a complete diagnosis that this is a parathyroid adenoma now what to do about it before we move on to the surgery when a patient uh, actually uh, comes to you uh, for um, uh, you know this problem uh, some of them they will present to you uh, in the opd with the symptoms and if you are a very good clinician you will be able to pick it up some of them they are referred from the nephrology department urology department from the orthopedic department from the psychiatry department but few of them they would as i told you they would present themselves in the emergency in the form of uh, you know uh, acute abdomen and acute dehydration and as i told you that if you look into the eyes of these people you will get the answer but sometimes uh, you know uh, you are not very careful and they will just present themselves in the form of acute dehydration abdominal pain nausea vomiting um, polydipsia polyuria and it will just look like a very very acute dehydration so your first job is to actually in these circumstances adequately hydrate adequately hydrate the patient these patients would require about 3 to 4 liters of fluid before they are uh, you know really uh, capable enough of uh, you know handling the situation and you should acutely hydrate it with the uh, normal saline because they are acutely dehydrated and uh, they are uh, you know uh, in the hypotensive phase they are almost anuric so you need to have it from Uh, you know normal saline this would be safest because we do not know the kidney status so that is now that is why we do not recommend ringers lactate we do not know whether they are uh, suffering from um, uh, from uh, from alkalosis or acidosis or uh, what is their uh, you know biochemical state so the safest would be what is their potassium levels like so the best would be just to hydrate them with normal saline and once you've done that because you know this is the most important thing that you have to very adequately hydrate these patients before doing anything and you send the electrolytes 
and the calcium and the glucose levels. And if you find that there is a very, very high amount of calcium in the, in, 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 in the, in the circulation, the next step would be to do something to move this calcium out of the extracellular fluid and push it back into the cells. And that is done by bisphosphonates. Or very easily you can say it is calcitonin. And they are actually very easily available in the market. So you not only hydrate this patient, but in every alternate bottle of normal saline, you put one injection of bisphosphonate or calcitonin. And they're available and they're freely available. And this is going to ensure that all this, that calcium, just that you know that when you have patients with high potassium levels, they come to depotash, they give insulin, they give glucose, so that the potassium will move from the level of extracellular fluid level. In this way, you have to say that these very high levels of calcitonin, which are, uh, these very high levels of calcium, which are, responsible for these acute symptoms, acute dehydration, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, dehydration, polydipsia, polyuria, they should actually be helped by moving the calcium away from the extracellular fluid compartment into the intracellular fluid compartment. So for this, you would require bisphosphonates and you would require calcitonins and so that the calcium is pushed back. And then you can give a symptomatic treatment which means that if the patient uh, is having uh, acid peptic symptoms, the patient should be given proton pump inhibitors and antacids. If the patient is having renal pain because of the nephrocalcinosis of stones in the kidney, the patient should be given narcotic analgesics so that the patient settles down. And if the patient is having acute bone pains and joint pains, similarly, uh, you know, uh, small doses of narcotic analgesics would be very, very helpful. So in, in cases of acute presentations, and if you are able to pick up that band keratopathy or conjunctival, uh, you know, foam depositions and or corneal uh, calcifications, you should be able to judge clinically that this patient is suffering from, this is not simple acute abdominal or acute dehydration, the patient is suffering from acute hypercalcemic crisis. And this has to be actually dealt by adequate hydration bisphosphonate therapy and symptomatic. And once you have done that, uh, then you should actually move on to, uh, you know, the um, elective management. And the elective management is nothing but to actually diagnose that this is a parathyroid adenoma. And the uh, parathyroid adenoma ko diagnose karne ke liye na high index of suspicion hona chahiye. Ye jab bhi diagnose hua hai na, ye tab bhi diagnose hua hai jab clinicians ne high index of suspicion rakha hai. Agar aap high index of suspicion ni maintain karte hai, if you don't have this in your mind as a house officer, as, as a resident, can acute abdomen and acute dehydration can be one of the presentations of acute hyperparathyroidism, you will never be able to pick it up in the emergency. But people do pick it up in the emergency. And I remember doctors picking it up, it up in the emergency that this would be by just looking into the, you know, you know, into the eyes of the patient and determining that what has happened and getting the same calcium level. So that is what you do when the patient is be going to be presented to you so ultimately, you end up uh, doing this surgery of this patient because that is the only answer. There is no way you can actually treat the parathyroid adenoma. So uh, multiple things have been, uh, you know, uh, you know, tried uh, how to actually multiple kind of medicines which are available in the market to stop, you know, the calcium. But that is only going to provide you with a very very transient relief. It is not going to provide you with, you know, um, uh, with a permanent relief. The permanent relief is that this parathyroid adenoma should be removed by either an open technique or a minimal invasive technique, and this should be done. For a parathyroid adenoma, the approach is very similar. This time the thyroid gland cooperation, these are the pictures of Usman Bajwa, the most recent of your years cooperate here. So uh, you can see that we have made similar insulin. What is this insulin? Collar insulin. जी कॉलर इंसुलिन भी कहलाते हैं और क्या चल रहा है इसका जी सर कॉकर्स इंसुलिन दिस इज अशाबाशी दिस इज आल्सो नोन एज द कॉकर्स इंसुलिन सो यू हैव टू बिकॉज़ द पैराथायराइड ग्लैंड इज लाइंग बिहाइंड द थायराइड ग्लैंड 
so until and unless you are going to uh, you know um, you know rotate the thyroid lobe you would not be able to actually go to the parathyroid gland so the excess is the excess of the thyroid gland so similar kind of insulin similar kind of you some pakad ke utharo similar kind of you know raising of the flap this was skin or supplement tissue platysma ko aapko uthana padta hai and once again you raise the upper flap this maine aapko dikhaya tha thyroid ke andar you raise the lower flap you determine where the thyroid uh, uh, thyroid in the parathyroid uh, you know the uh, the strap muscles and raise the uh, sternocleidomastoid and you actually uh, you know now what i've done right here for this patient is that i've done all the dissection ye maine aapko thyroid ki dissection ke sare steps dikha diye hue hain aur is waqt maine now this is the parathyroid adenoma this one you know my fingers and the gauze is the thyroid gland ye jahan pe maine ye artery forcing rakha hai this is the trachea this is the trachea and you can see that this is the blood vessel which is leading right into the parathyroid gland this was a large parathyroid gland and this is the nerve so this parathyroid gland was almost embedded into the into the into the thyroid tissue and uh, we had uh, though it was very large but it was since it was embedded in the thyroid tissue so we had a great difficulty in locating it but once again i told you that we have to follow the simple principle that if you are not able to find it follow the blood supply the blood supply would would ultimately lead you to the to the to the thyroid gland to the parathyroid gland itself and uh, and you can see that this is the adenoma we have rotated the whole of the thyroid lobe towards the opposite side and this is the blood vessel and now i am showing that this is the blood vessel and the you have to identify the recurrent laryngeal nerve and this recurrent laryngeal nerve can be seen going right into the trachea over here and this is and this is this thing was the adenoma lying right in front of the uh, uh, the, uh, the recurrent laryngeal nerve and if you are not very careful you can see that you can very easily damage the recurrent laryngeal nerve so luckily we were able to find out the recurrent laryngeal nerve and uh, we could trace it right up to the level of the level of the uh, point where it enters the trachea and this is the final step where we are actually taking down the parathyroid adenoma these are views from other surgeries that how would it would look like uh but this is a very good picture i this this picture i showed you uh right in the beginning that how does a parathyroid adenoma look like a parathyroid adenoma is plum colored it is encapsulated into 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 a pad of fat it has got its blood supply and here you can see that this is the trachea this is the right inferior parathyroid this is the sternomastoid sternohyoid muscle and this is the sternomastoid muscles so you can see that uh, this is one of the techniques jo hum kabhi kabhi apply karte hain if the if the adenoma is uh, uh, localized absolutely this is known as uh, a mini parathyroidectomy that is we do not actually open up whole of the uh, you know uh, uh, the neck and we do not rotate the uh, we actually go through a lateral approach and we go directly on to the on to the uh, parathyroid adenoma and actually just lift the lobe of the thyroid gland to the opposite side identify the trachea and you know, so but this is a very minimally invasive technique and really surgeons who are very very you know uh, expert and who are very very you know astute in you know doing the parathyroid surgery should adopt that but for younger surgeons i would also always recommend the anterior approach which we really utilize so when i became a professor of surgery and after after many years of becoming a professor of surgery when i thought that i am quite all right doing parathyroid surgery then i started adopting this lateral approach otherwise for for younger surgeons i would always recommend an anterior approach so these are just uh, and sometimes uh, you know it is not just a parathyroid adenoma it's a parathyroid hyperplasia which means that all four parathyroid glands are equally involved in this uh, hyperparathyroidism and this usually would occur in secondary hyperparathyroidism so there there are few patients but you can see that we have to remove you know all the four glands but we do not remove all the four glands we remove three glands completely and the fourth gland is removed half because parathyroid is required for the body 
Parathyroid hormone is very important for maintaining the calcium. Parathyroid hormone is necessary for maintaining the life because if it is not there, then the patient has to be on parathyroid hormone for life. And it is very, very expensive. It is not possible for everybody to afford it. Even for the very rich and affluent, it becomes very difficult to have a one tablet of parathyroid hormone. Pehli to baat hai, available hi nahi. Aur dusri baat hai ki agar available hai, to mehengi itni hai ki aam aadmi to khai nahi sakta. To uske liye zaruri hota hai ki aap jab parathyroid hyperplasia ho, to aapko sorry, this is not thyroid hyperplasia. This is parathyroid. So it's a parathyroid hyperplasia. So when you do that, you actually remove three glands and you remove half of the fourth gland. So you can see that only half of the fourth gland was removed. The rest of the hyperplastic glands were removed. So that is left over there, and uh, this later on grows and take up takes up the position of uh, a normal parathyroid gland, and which one single parathyroid gland is sufficient to maintain uh, the body function. Okay, we stop here, and I will, I'm ready to take your questions because the complications of parathyroid surgery are absolutely similar to that of the that of the uh, thyroid surgery. That it can lead to hemorrhage, it can lead to recurrent nerve damage, it can actually cause uh, uh, parathyroid insufficiency. Because याद रखिए कि जब parathyroid adenoma होता है तो ये grow कर गया होता है. It is the dominant parathyroid gland. ये इतना बढ़ गया होता है कि इसने नेगेटिव फीडबैक मैकेनिज्म के थ्रू इसने जो है ना इसने बाकी ग्लैंड्स को सब्ड्यू कर दिया होता है क्योंकि बाकी ग्लैंड सब्ड्यू इस तरह के हो गए होते हैं कि वो नजर भी नहीं आ रहे होते सो व्हेन यू रिमूव दिस रेस्ट ऑफ द ग्लैंड्स विल टेक अप सम टाइम टू एक्चुअली स्टार्ट प्रोड्यूसिंग पैराथायरॉइड एंड द कैल्शियम मेटाबॉलिज्म इज मेंटेन तो ये पेशेंट्स जो पहले इनको हाइपर कैल्सीमिया हो रहा होता है आफ्टर 48 आवर्स क्योंकि 24 आवर्स से 48 आवर्स तक तो बॉडी का कैल्शियम का रिजर्व रहता है After 48 hours, calcium depletion starts happening. तो पहले क्या होता है कि इनको हमेशा calcium इनका पहले ज्यादा होता है जब इनका stimulus खत्म हो जाता है तो उस वक्त bones चूंकि hungry होती हैं for the calcium. तो calcium जितना available होता है सारा सारा का सारा intracellularly चले जाता है bones में deposit हो जाता है और नए जो parathyroid जो बाकी के parathyroid हैं वो इतने subdue हो गए होते हैं कि वो अभी अपना काम ही नहीं शुरू कर पाए होते हैं सो द पेशेंट क्लासिकली ऑन दी थर्ड डे विल स्टार्ट डेवलपिंग सिम्टम्स ऑफ हाइपो कैल्सीमिया तो नई मुसीबत खड़ी हो जाती है पहले हाइपर कैल्सीमिया को आप ट्रीट कर रहे होते हैं अब ये हाइपो कैल्सीमिया शुरू हो गया तो इन पेशेंट्स को आपने इंस्ट्रक्शन देनी होती है कि ऑपरेशन के बाद इन्होंने कैल्शियम की टैबलेट्स एफरपेसेंट सी एस सी थाउजेंड के नाम से और दूसरी कैल्शियम डी जो चूसने के लिए होती है वो उनसे कहते हैं कि आपने कॉन्टीन्यूसली एक हफ्ता इस्तेमाल करते जानी है चाहे आपको सिम्टम्स आ रहे हैं नहीं आ रहे हैं लेकिन अगर सिम्टम्स आए तो पेशेंट को बताते हैं कि सिम्टम्स हाइपोकैल्सीमिया के होते क्या है उसमें नमनेस ऑफ हैंड एंड फीट होती है नमनेस अराउंड दी पेरी ओरल यू नो एरिया होता है बॉडी uh, में क्रैम्प्स आने शुरू होते हैं और रेस्पिरेटरी डिफिकल्टी होती है तो उसमें उनसे कहा जाता है उनको इंस्ट्रक्शन दे भेज जाती है कि फ़ौर आपने अस्पताल वापस आ जाना है क्योंकि अब इनको ना कैल्शियम के इन्फ्यूजन की जरूरत होती है सो यू शुड रिमेंबर दिस पॉइंट दैट ऑल पैराथाइड एडनोमर्स वंस दे आर रिमूवड they would actually present again after 48 hours with severe hypocalcemia and that has to be taken care of and that has to be remembered that this is going to happen otherwise if you are going to ignore it the patient is going to be in serious trouble so now i am ready to take your questions so first question ye hai ki agar hum use discharge hi na kare 3 days uska hospital stay kar liya jaye और सेकंड है कि सर ये पैराथायरॉइड ऑटोग्राफ जो है ये हमारे एक प्रैक्टिस होता है जी आ, इस तरह है कि आपने बिल्कुल दुरुस्त कहा हमारी जनरल पॉलिसी ये है कि हम उसको तीन दिन अपने पास रखते हैं क्योंकि हमारी पॉपुलेशन जो हमारे पास सर्विसेज हॉस्पिटल में आती है वो कई दफ़ा शहर से बाहर से आई होती है दूर दराज इलाकों से आई होती है तो उनके पास इतना टाइम ही नहीं होता कि वो अगर उनको सिम्टम्स आए तो वापस लाहौर हमारे पास पहुँच सके या समटाइम्स Uh, जो लोग होते हैं हम समझते हैं कि शायद ये uh, ये uh, इतने पढ़े लिखे नहीं हैं कि ये हमारी सारी बात समझ जाए और टाइमली रिस्पॉन्ड कर जाए तो जुल्कन मेरे साथ बैठे हुए हैं हमारी जनरल पॉलिसी ये होती है कि हम तीन चार दिन उनको उनको ऑपरेशन के बाद अपने पास रख लेते हैं क्योंकि इन लोगों के लिए वापस आना मुमकिन ही नहीं होता तो बहुत मुश्किल हो जाता है और बाय द टाइम अगर ये कभी किसी नज़दीकी अस्पताल पहुँच जाए तो उन डॉक्टर्स को तो समझ नहीं आती कि ये क्या हो रहा है बिकॉज दे आर नॉट ट्रेन इन टीचिंग हॉस्पिटल्स तो उनको पता ही नहीं होता बेचारों को तो येस यू आर वेरी राइट 
दे शुड नॉट बी सेंट होम बिफोर सेवेंटी टू आवर्स अगर सिम्टम्स आ जाए लेकिन हम सेफ समझते हैं कि अगर आप ये अगर कैल्शियम की टैबलेट्स खाते रहें और वो जो सी एस थाउजेंड है वो जो पानी में डाल के उसका ऑरेंज सा जूस बन जाता है अगर वो पीते रहें तो ये सेफ रहते हैं उनको कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं होती बिकॉज इनको टाइम चाहिए होता है बाकी जो जो पैराथायरड्स होते हैं वो रही बात आपकी पैराथायरड ऑटो ट्रांसप्लांटेशन की ये बिल्कुल हो सकती है जिस तरह आपने देखा कि हम ये छोटा सा ये पोर्शन छोड़ देते हैं होता यह है कि जब इसको हम छोड़ते हैं ना तो इसको वहाँ पे नहीं छोड़ते क्योंकि उसकी वजह यह है कि जब एक दफ़ा पैराथायरड एड ग्लैंड को आप उसके बेड से उठा लेते हैं उसकी वायरस को स्प्राई ख़त्म हो जाती है तो इस ये जो आपके पास ये जो थोड़ा सा थायरड टिश्यू रह जाते हैं इसके आप मल्टीपल स्टाइसिस कर देते हैं छोटे छोटे मल्टीपल स्टाइसिस कर देते हैं और उसके बाद जो स्टोनल किडोमेस्टोड मसल है उसके फाइबर्स को ओपन करते हैं और उन फाइबर्स के अंदर ये छोटे छोटे स्लाइसिस लग जाते हैं ये ऑटोमेटिकली वहाँ पे ग्रो कर जाते हैं और वहाँ पे हम एक वहाँ पे हम एक क्लिप लगा देते हैं ये जो मेटालिक क्लिप होता है ना टाइटेनियम का वो लगा देते हैं ताकि हमें पता हो क्योंकि ये ग्रो इसने ग्रो करना होता है इट विल फॉर्म अ स्मॉल स्वेलिंग तो ये एडिनोमा के तौर पे अपने आप को प्रजेंट करते हैं तो हमें पता होना चाहिए कि ये नेक के अंदर जो है ना लेकिन बेस्ट जो पैराथायरड की ऑटो ट्रांसप्लांटेशन होती है उसकी बेस्ट जगह एक्चुअली लिवर है कि आप छोटा सा इंसियन देखें लिवर के अंदर छोटा सा इंसियन दें और उसको डाल दें ये हंड्रेड परसेंट वहाँ ग्रो कर जाता है सो इट इज़ अ पॉसिबिलिटी बट चूंकि उस वक्त आप नहीं चाहते कि आप डिप्रॉटमी करें और लिवर को खोल के उसके अंदर डालें तो दी अदर आंसर इज दैट यू कैन जस्ट पुट इट इन एनी मसल चूंकि हमने नेक का मसल पैराथायरड वो स्टर्नोक्रिडोमेस्टोड खोला होता है तो हम उसी को खोल के लगाते हैं बट इट कैन बी प्लेस इन दी फोर आम मसल ऑन द थाई मसल एनी वेर यू लाइक एंड यू डी टेक अप उनको प्रॉब्लम नहीं होती जी एनी अदर क्वेश्चन ओके देन यू विल फिनिश एंड नेक्स्ट टाइम यू गोट टू स्टार्ट अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग क्योंकि मैंने आपको एंडोक्राइन प्लान्स पढ़ाने हैं तो विल स्टार्ट अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक लेकिन आप टाइम पे आ जाएगा जब मैं क्लास